Peace and blessings, soul fam. Adam Jackson here for another episode of the Sacred Sons podcast. We are still returning from Convergence, uh, the epic experience that was amidst the Redwoods and on the Oregon coast. Again, sending much love and many thanks to the 300 plus men who joined us out there. It was really a chance to deepen into our nature connection um, in a way that we haven't before. You know, Sacred Sons has done a lot of work in the desert and to, to connect with the land and the aliveness and the moisture and, and all that is up there. Darren, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a different way to engage uh, amongst the elements, you know, and get, you know, get our hands and, and boots a little bit dirty and muddy and, and then to jump in that ice cold ocean. I mean, especially the first couple days. Uh, when all that weather was there and the, the ocean it was just these huge waves and the wind and, and you know I remember walking back to my camp at, at night and it was just so mystical so foggy and these huge trees I mean mystical mystical's a great yeah. way to describe it yeah and so we're going to be talking a little bit more today about our connection to nature with that our guest today is Darren Silver he is a rite of passage guide, a ceremonialist, he's a gifted storyteller, and he's leading an upcoming event with Sacred Sons Wild Rites for the third time. We're bringing mm -hmm. a video quest this time to Ecuador, January 14th through 22nd, 2022. And Wild Rites is a ritual of remembering our belonging to ourselves and to our planet. So looking forward to dropping in with this brother our mythical pillar, our guide. Please welcome Darren Silver. Mm, thanks, brother. Man, it's so good to be here with you. Hear your voice. And uh, yeah, just really grateful. Grateful to be here. Yeah, grateful to be back, man. Uh, we were just, we were chatting before we started recording about the, the impact of the stories we tell, of the words we use, uh, and mm -hmm. how they kind of filter out through the, through the brotherhood and through the community. And this time we're bringing, you are bringing uh, Wild Rights along with your beloved, and it's going to be a co-ed event. So we're going to have men yeah. and women out for the vision quest. Really stoked about that. Yeah, my partner Dana Saray uh, and myself are going to be out there and um, yeah, holding space for, for men and for women. And, um, you know, I've always been looking for a place uh, that, it's ideal for quests uh, in the wintertime, wintertime in the Northern Hemisphere. And this place just, just completely, the doors just opened uh, for us to be there and, and guide a wild rites. Um, blessed by the indigenous people. Um, I mean, I can launch off in, into, you know, I, I get on the phone with these people and, and they're like, yeah, about three, four years ago, uh, the Kogi showed up. Mm. And they said, hey, just so you know, this is sacred ground and um, we need to build a temple here that is connected to our temples. And uh, the people there said, oh, OK, you know, I, I guess we'll do that. And, and the, the, the architecture uh, is the same as the Kogi temples. Yeah. And so they built this temple and it's got these antennas at the top, uh, mystical uh, antennas to connect to the other temples and and the kogi come back and they're there to do the blessing ceremony so oh we need a fire you know let's light a fire and so the the people they light the fire and they just looked at them and said okay uh, just so you know that that fire's never to go out now <laughs> wow you know yeah, that was five <laughs> years ago and um so the, it's the temple of original thought is what it's called. And um, so we'll be us using that space a little bit. Um, there's also other local indigenous people there um, that will be part of the ceremony. And just it just felt like an open door. And, you know, the way that I like to do it is include the local people as much as possible um, in many different ways. So I'm just thrilled. We're thrilled. Dana and I are, are very thrilled to be down there. Yeah. And, and I'm thrilled as a as a co-founder of this organization that we're going international again. Yeah. Finally, we're back in the world. 
we can we can mm-hmm. travel to to South America. And I love that you have a connection, you know, a deep connection with the people who who steward this land and with the indigenous folks and, and the stories that they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe maybe in a little bit we'll drop into some stories that you have. Uh, for now, I want to I want to drop into a little check in. Let's take a deep breath for ourselves. If you're listening along, breathe with us. Just dropping into our bodies, feeling what is alive and present. Darren, on this beautiful November day, what is most alive within you? Mm. Yeah. Whew, well, bringing up convergence, all the brothers and, and their faces um, and their their smiles and their tears and their, um, you know, courage to have their, their hearts cracked open uh, so it yeah. can, you know, so the, 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 uh, their tears can flow down river into, uh, into their other people's hearts. And so brings so much joy and so much strength to me. Um, so that's present all those brothers that I got to see and sacred sons is unique in the way that um, it's a, it's a community. And so, you know, a couple times a year we get to get together and, and I get to see brothers that I, that I only see a couple times a year. <laughs> yeah. so we get to catch up, you know, and ask about the family and ask about the partner and ask about the homestead. And um, so that's, what's present for me now. Also out here in Colorado, it's just beginning to feel a little bit like winter, um, which I look forward to. By the end of summer, I'm ready to bundle up and chop wood and light the fire. And um, so, yeah, present to that. Yeah, that feels good. Adam checking in. You, you said it, looking forward to. And there's some simple poetic beauty for me uh, which is to always have something to look forward to. It's simple medicine. You know, and I, I, like, I like the basics. I like simple things that work. And so I have a lot to look forward to, even as the, the season is coming into darkness and the year is closing. Um, I still have so much to look forward to. And specifically within my family, we're, we're, we're inviting in a new soul. And somewhere around the new year, we're, we're going to be having a, another sacred son. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's there's that monumental uh aspect of our family's growth to look forward to and just looking forward to to sitting in front of the fireplace while the christmas tree lights are on you know mm. looking forward to circling up with my brothers in maui one last time this year to close out a beautiful 2021 um looking forward to sacred union we're going to gather at trilogy so there's still there's still some community and and so much to look forward to and I just, I love that piece around like, if there is some kind of sense of something's missing, like give, or give set intentions to have things to look forward to. I think it's good mm. for the soul. It's good for the psyche. Oh, yeah. It's good for the heart. Yeah. So with that, I'm in. And um, <laughs> yeah, man, you know, you said it, you said it, the, the joy and the grief and in, in, in creating that space for the men to go there. And with, with what you're bringing through and um, with the vision quest, there's a, there's a big part of it that's about embracing the, wi- the wilderness or the wildness of our own hearts, as well as the grieving, mm-hmm. really like giving our tears back to the earth. And so, um, you know, as we look forward to, to wild rights, um, what, are, what are some of the pieces that, you know, you're looking forward to bring to these brothers and sisters who join you? Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I think about the grief and I think about the last wild rights, you know, um, it was the type of grief that, that cut clean through, you know, it was, it was those artesian tears, the ones that come from that really, really deep place and are, and are pure and are actually purifying and cleansing. And so they, they ultimately led to like, an unencumbered joy and, and laughter and freedom and, 
and wholeness. So, I mean, there was grief present, but there was eruptions, you know, of laughter that if I listen real closely, I can still, I can still hear bouncing around, you know, in, in, in my being. Mm. Um, so, I mean, so many, so many stories from, from wild rights of, of like cutting through to a place and, and openings, um, and the interior of the men that, that were on there, that, that, that were like a wilderness inside themselves. Like, whoa, I, I never even touched that experience within me. Um, and sometimes there's other experiences of our history that inhibit us from, from finding those other vast terrains that uh, increase our capacity um, to be in the world. Uh, so, you know, what's, what's most important to me, um, you know, we talk about vision a lot. I talk about vision a lot and, you know, there's vision with a small V and vision with a big V and vision with a small V is like that, which I, or we commit to on the daily, you know, um, it's, it's our commitments. I commit to doing this. I commit to these practices. Um, I commit to hold myself in this way. Um, I commit to do this work. And then there's like a handful of times in our life where the big V vision comes in. Mm. And, and that's when we're asked of something from creator or life, you know? And, um, and, and it's in the process of responding to those big V visions that I believe we become adults, you know, where it's no longer quite about us, but it's like, well, life is, is asking something of me to step into. So when it comes to wild rights and it's going out there and I'm just thrilled, like my beloved's going to be there. Um, uh, I've traveled and guided internationally for years. It's been a while. Um, it's too for people to really step into both. What are the commitments and how do I want to hold myself? Who am I? Yeah. What is part of my, you know, story and biography? Um, what are my wounds? Those are all small V vision. And then to deeply listen for like, okay, where, where is the call from life or creator? Um, and sometimes that takes years, you know? And, you know, my first vision quest 15 years ago, was like, ah, I'm going to see, you know, there's going to be 40 white buffalo and, you know, naked nymphs on top of them and some old elder at, you know, at the tail end and is going to whisper to me why I'm here. It's like bullshit that didn't happen, you know? And yeah. uh, a bluebird came and told me mm. the most powerful message, you know, that's still, still relevant today you know and um but it's important for young people to have that kind of blunt grandiosity to go out into the world and then it slowly gets tempered you know the sword slowly gets sharpened yeah yeah and so i'm a fan love, of grandiosity <laughs> but i and i love that that capital v that big v vision uh because what you're really alluding to is is our life's purpose and so when you go out there and you have these visions, um, you know, they're all connected to purpose. Yeah. So I don't think we've ever kind of gone here, but um, when did you become connected to your life's purpose and your life's work? Because I feel, I mean, I, I, I know a little bit of the backstory. We've talked a little bit, but um, that real connection that from that bluebird hmm. and moving oh, forward. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, um, because I think a lot of people are coming to you to, to connect to theirs. So I think it'd be helpful to hear a bit of yours. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I'll pull a little bit from um, some wisdom from Maladoma Somme. And, and he'll say something like this, like, imagine if you came into the world already fully equipped 
to do what you came here to do. You already have the degree. You already have the diploma. You're already prepared to do it, you know? Um, in some way, that's how his people view um, our purpose. And uh, I feel like that is true for all of us. And it's, it's really these moments of remembering that which we already know. Right. It's remembering that which already lives inside of us. It's just as much as there's these worlds of spirit um, and the spirit that moves through all things and uh, God and the, uh, those worlds also exist within, you know? Um, so just as much as there's potentiality and the constant flowering of the earth that that exists within us as well. So let me so ask you, let me, let me yeah. ask, well, do you have more to say there? I could. Cause I, well, what I was gonna, what I was gonna ask you is, cause I have these moments of my own life, but when did you first remember? Do you have a moment where you were like, yeah. you know, like it, 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 it maybe maybe it stopped you. Yeah, the the remembrance uh, being so like so specific and and so potent. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I will get to the moment. Like as as um, a kid, I always felt deeply connected to the wild, mm -hmm. to nature, always. Um, that was my place of play, of curiosity, of exploration. Um, but I remember I went to this summer camp huge huge impact on my life in many different ways but we were walking down this trail my crew you know around this lake and i remember i stopped and there was something in the distance and i asked my counselor said what is that and it was um it was a sweat lodge actually whoa and i was probably somewhere between 10 and 12 9 and 12 and I distinctly remember being like, I have to get in there. I mean, it was like, it stopped me in my tracks. Wow. Um, and I remember feeling like, you know, the counselor saying something like, uh, it's just for the counselors, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It took me, from that point, it took me a decade to find my way into one. I mean, that's not my purpose, right? It, but... Uh, that was it. That's a huge part of my path. Um, so yeah, that was, was probably a, the first real moment. I mean, that was the remembrance of a ritual, right? And th this is what why the, the rituals are important because they bring that sense of familiarity, that sense of home, even, even before we've stepped into the womb, even before we return to that in EP. It's yeah. like that there's something familiar about that because it's, it's thousands of years old. And it exists in our DNA. It exists in our bones. Yeah. And, and we've been there before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's something like a Nipi in, 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 in a lot of cultures, you know? Yeah, exactly. And uh, there's a guy's Sundance with, um, and I'd heard stories about this. And, and, and then I heard it myself. People would say, oh yeah, like don't, don't, when you're Sundancing, don't, don't share the teepee with him because he talks in his sleep, you know, and it'll wake you up. And, and he speaks Lakota in his dream dude doesn't know but five words of lakota and then i heard it woke me up dude speaking fluent lakota you know wow. yeah i wake him up hey what are you doing you're talking lakota i don't know get, get, get you woke me up man <laughs> <laughs> it's like how's that possible you know or some people will go into a lodge and they'll just start singing the songs he never been in there before but i know the songs wow you know yeah yeah so that was a, that was a big first, big first moment. Do you have any, I'm just asking cause we're here and I'm, I'm actually <laughs> interested. Do you like, what is your belief or understanding around? So we come here fully equipped and maybe we come with the, with the backing of all of our ancestors who survived to pass on to us this life. Mm. Um, and maybe even our, our soul has experienced past lives. Right. Mm -hmm. So what, what is your sense of like the, the soul's connection to this experience of human life in relation to potentially other lifetimes mm -hmm. in that, in the net, in that acknowledgement of like, I want to get in there. 
because mm -hmm. I've been there before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? It does make sense. I mean, that, that was a full body experience. Like I remember it. I still feel it in my bones now. I remember 10 year old Darren standing mm -hmm. there. I mean, I can see the whole, I can see it still. Um, I don't play so much in the realm of past lives other than like what, when I'm working with someone, it's like, well, as opposed to getting intoxicated, if you will, or under the influence or in fantasy of an identification with the past life, right. it's more like, how is it, sh how is that aspect showing up now? How is that quality um, showing up in your life? Like, you know, I've been told, um, well, you're, you're, you're an ancient warrior, you know? Um, and it's like, okay, cool. Uh, like, I don't know how useful that is if I'm going out to dinner with my family. Um, <laughs> but like when that part needs to be called upon, that's still relevant now. Yeah. Um, that's where it's interesting to me, you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. W w like geographically, I feel it. Like you feel the pull to maybe if you, you feel called to samurai culture and you're like, I really just want to go explore Northern Japan. You know, like there's, I have no idea why it just lives inside of me or, yeah. or someone else may have these fantasies of, of Greece or of, you know, of, of previous yeah. cultures that they're really drawn to for a particular reason. Yeah. And, yeah, I just wonder if there's, if, what is that? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because I've, I've, you know, my mom's from Iran. Yeah. Um, and so, and that's on my mother's side of the family. I'm first generation born in the States. And it was about a decade ago that the call got really strong to go, to go there. And growing up, I always wanted to go there. I still have family there. And of course had family there when I was a kid. And um, I was always told like, it's not a good time. It's not safe to go to Iran. And so about a decade ago, it was like, I, I have to go. Um, and this came through some experiences um, on Quest. And I started doing a bunch of rituals, you know, in preparation. Um, and one of them was uh, preparing a meal for my ancestors and putting it, um, putting it next to my bed, along with like, you know, I heard my grandfather really liked vodka. So I put some vodka and he smoked cigarettes. So I put, yeah. a, put some tobacco out, things yeah, like you, that. You put what they like, the, you know, the, the cigars, like, the candy, yeah. the fruit. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to like a green smoothie, you know. So <laughs> anyway, um, and I went to Ben and said, you know, guide me, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I asked this question, and it's kind of strange I'm sharing this so publicly. But I asked the question like, okay, if I'm an ancestor coming back, show me. And, you know, in the dream time, I went to bed and sure enough, there was, there was a scene and there was other things going on. And then, and then this paper was opened and a pen and a hand came and wrote out a name. And I was just getting ready to go to Iran. So I was actually at my mom's place in Virginia. I woke up in the morning and said, oh, do you know, do you know of an ancestor or, you know, a grandparent or something that had this name? She said, well, no, like absolutely not. And uh, never heard of it. And, so like a week later, my uncle, um, Iraj, uh, sent me this massive document of this family tree. Wow. And that my cousin had found, you know, by asking another distant relative at a wedding like two years prior and had kind of forgotten about it. And my uncle had it and he decided to send it to me. Of course, like the patriarch. The, the, the oldest living ancestor that was recorded, it was his name. Wow. And I'm going, what the fuck? You know? Wow, look at that. And wow. so I can identify with his biography and his life story, <laughs> but that to me gets a little bit um, mystical. I find myself unstable, you know, if I mm. identify with that. Yeah. It's more like, 
I'm like more like, okay, what, what part of that is, is, is coming into my life now? I actually have a really funny story. Um, you want to hear kind of a funny, it's, well, I, change, I just want to say, no, no, I want to hear the funny story, but what I wanted to say about what you, what you just shared is it's not about necessarily, um, claiming to know like, okay, now, now I know how it works. And I, I was shown the, it's, a, it's about the feeling that you get from it. That, that yeah. feeling of confirmation, exactly. confirmation doesn't come in the form of like being right or righteous or knowing it comes in the form of feeling. Like I feel it all over my body. I feel it in my gut. I feel it in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Fully. And that's, and we have to accept that like, Oh, and that's, that's the, the grace with which we're, we're blessed by it. And that's, that's how we can follow it. Um, I feel like there's such an attachment to knowing how things are, why they work. And sometimes it's just yeah. like, no, I gotta, we got to let that go and, and follow where we're guided by how we feel. Yeah. And how we and then, or how our dreams show up. That's so true. And I, and I, and I, my sense is it was that feeling that was, became invested in me through that, through that dream and many others um, that kept me safe in Iran. Mm. I mean, I landed there, I pull out my American passport. They take me out of immigration, put me in a private room. You know, I get asked a whole bunch of questions, get my fingerprints taken. Um, you know, that was the most, uh, let's say, sc scary part for me, going in and out of the country. Um, once they're amongst the people, I'm, I'm okay. And certainly my cousins and uncles and aunts and, you know, grandparents and um, but I remember leap when I was leaving the country, I'm standing in line and there's like a series of checks and, uh, checkpoints and a, a young, um, soldier comes up to me, you know, looks at me and, 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 and starts wanting to pull me out of line. And I'm like, just about to board my plane. And I'm like, I got it. You know, <laughs> like, no, this isn't happening now. You know, I've made it six weeks here and he starts pulling. I need to question you. Where are you from? You're coming with me. And I, and I stopped and I looked at him dead. And I said, Hey, look, you know, I came here to be with my family. And, and I believe it was that feeling that came through from that dream that impacted him the most. And Ooh. he looked at me and he said, he said, okay, okay. Get back in line. Yes. You know, um, feeling yeah, the, was great. the truth, yeah. of, the truth of the feeling came through in your, with your presence. Yeah. And exactly. that was, and that was enough. That was enough. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cause otherwise who knows? I may still, still be there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. Even at convergence, I had, had that moment, like standing in the center of all those guys in the rain, holding a staff, like call and response. We're, we're setting agreements, like, you know, to, to go into battle, to go in, go, to go into the, the shadows within you know, to go into the, those places that, that might scare us. And so I'm like giving that speech or t speaking to those men in that opening ceremony. And I'm like, I've been here before, you know, I've led men before and maybe it oh, looked yeah. different, but I've been here before. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I got that yeah. whole, those, the whole body chills too. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's evident. It's evident of the feeling that in the, the broadcast that comes out from you. Mm. You know, it's like the, the broadcast is potent um, because it's not a entirely new. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have, and there's, it's not just me. It's not just you. We have so many amazing brothers who are co-leading in, in this organization, in this movement. And yeah, for a lot of time, at convergences, you were, you were, you know, sitting behind the bucket, tending the fire, holding down lodge. And, and this time you kind of, kind of came in at your own request to uh, be, uh, have, have those responsibilities placed somewhere else. And so we did yeah. that. And how, so how was it for you to come into convergence and to experience without having uh, to hold that space that you do so well? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, gratitude on all levels. One for, you know, um, speaking to how I have shown up and then also being able to show up in a different way. 
Um, cause a lot of times it was, it was, you know, holding a lodge every day or sometimes two and in previous conversions, a hundred men or 120 men coming through that space. Um, and the physicality of it. I mean, it's like by day four or five, I'm like a piece of jerky and um, don't want to, don't want to um, talk with many people. It's kind of like, I want to be with myself. Um, and so this year going like, ah, no, like I want to be in connection. I want to, I want to in a different way um, with the brothers that, that show up. And, and, and therefore have a much different perspective about what, what's happening. Um, Cause I didn't get to experience other dudes medicine um, yeah, yeah. or I'd come down and have dinner and, and God bless, you know, everybody that comes, but having a young man come up and want to tell me about the spirit animal that came to him in lodge. It's like, love you, dude. I don't have a bandwidth. For it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And I hide out in the kitchen and eat dinner, you know, because I just couldn't, <laughs> couldn't hang with it and so this time um you know able to hang and have a blast and and um and and allow myself to be a little bit more spontaneous um not as much sense of having to contain my energy and pres- you know so i could do the lodge another day you right. know things like that so it was wonderful to show up in this way um and see the diversity of masculine expression that shows up there. Um, both, uh, you know, just in the quality of where men are, but of course, racially, of course, you know, in the world, because it's, it, there's dudes from England and the dudes from Australia and indigenous men and, you know, South American and, and get to like really absorb that, um, colorful fabric woven together to do something greater than ourselves. Um, Because ultimately what keeps the experiences alive and living is each man knowing, Hey, this is going to go back for my people. This is going to be in my relationships. It's going to be in my family. It's going to be in my work. It's going to be how I show up in the world. And that's what keeps their experiences living. And so um, I mean, just cruising around and having meals. And I mean, it's like you sit at the table with a dude that's way into crypto and speaking a language <laughs> that I'm like barely understanding, you know, to two guys, you know, speaking Brazilian over here. And then, you know, and it's just, it's just fascinating. And that's so fulfilling to me. It's so fulfilling that we can all come together um, to, to honor our human experience um, yeah. and, and find the place where, hey, this is where we stand together. Yes. There's so much division in the world, so much. And that's a place where it's like, we can stand together here, you know? Yes. And, and hearing each other's stories, it's like I'd, I'd, I'd break and run through any walls with you mm. because I got your story. I know where you came from. And that's the type of, um, connection and continuity i think is is deep medicine for the world Man, deep medicine. yeah that really goes into the the power of story and storytelling yeah. and the power of listening yeah you know it's one thing to have your story and to be excited to share it it's another thing to sit back and listen to a brother who you may have you know upon meeting feel like you have nothing in common with mm. or feel like you don't even want to look them in the eyes Mm. that happens too and oh, I, yeah. a, a brother shared with me as I, I was having a meal at a table and a guy just came up to me he's like man I, I never realized how judgmental I was you know there's mm. he's like there, there's men that I have met and that we went through this experience with and he's like on the first day you know like I was judging him like I mm. what do I have in common with this guy or, or this guy must be this or that but by the end they're hugging, they're exchanging numbers, they're, they're making plans. They have something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. This is powerful. This is powerful. And, and, if, and if world leaders and if, if people who are making massive decisions for our planet would take the time to listen, mm-hmm. 
How powerful mm-hmm. could that be? What kind of change mm-hmm. could be impacted then? Yeah. And I think, it, you know, from where we're at, it, it, it has to start with some of these indigenous cultures. We have yeah. to become educated and start listening to, to our ancestors, to our elders, to, to, um, to people who have carried these traditions for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and listening, listening can be incredibly vulnerable. Mm. Like really taking, you know, it's like uh, in ritual connection. You know, it was the first time I got to hang out there and I'm like, oh, I'm good, man. I'm going to support. And, you know, and, and I'm deeply listening. All of a sudden, some dude's story starts ricocheting and, and touching things in me. It's going, I, oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, got some knots there. You know, uh oh. You know, it's touching on some of my stuff. You know, and <laughs> there's some yeah. vulnerability there. And then all of a sudden, it's like, ooh, wow. Okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want to send a shout out to our brother King K, send him uh, peace and health and rest and wellness. But this brother showed up with his sons, you know, and that gets me when a, when a father and sons is showing up in our spaces and mm. um, like doing that work together in real time, you know, mm. with the witness of, of these brothers, like this, that that's what gets me. Yeah. That, you know, we're, we're providing a space uh, for families, for friends, for, for brothers to have these conversations that are so impactful. And then you see that healing, you feel it, you witness it, and then you, you call your own father or you, you make that, you have that conversation in your own life that you need to make. And like, like you're saying, it starts to, mm-hmm. starts to get at the pieces in you that need to shift. You yeah. know, those, those deep tears from within start to come and, and cleanse and purify. And that wasn't even your story. Yeah. That was their story. Yeah. But it's our story. It's our story yeah. now, and we're all carrying it together now. Yeah, yeah. I remember, and this is a couple of conversions ago, um, there was a man that went on wild rights with me. And um, an aspect of his quest was about his relationship with his father. Um, and it, it touched on a lot of a lot of grief for him. And, you know, three months later was Convergence and his dad was there. Mm. And they ended up being in Sweat Lodge together. The son is sitting right next to me. Dad is a little bit further off in the back of the lodge. And after the first or second round, his dad was like, man, I, I got to get out of here. This is too much. And I said, okay, absolutely, you can leave. But being the elder in the space, I'm curious if you can make a prayer before you leave. And he pretty much just launched into his praise of his son Mm. in the ways that he didn't didn't know um, his son and the ways that he was learning about him through being there for the couple days. And so here's his son who had gone on wild rights, you know, weeping, weeping for a sense of being seen, of acknowledgement, of healing happening right there in that space, you know, and it was, it was medicine for every single man in there to see that and go, oh my God, that's possible. That's possible. You know, there can be healing. It's so it's big work. It's really big work. Yeah. It's big work and <clears throat> it's big work. And, you know, as we're evolving and, um, you know, growing, it's important that we do the work for all of us. So I love the fact that you are bringing your beloved, um, that you guys are co-creating and leading uh, the next vision quest. And I just, I'm just curious, like, you know, I know you guys lead workshops together and you guys each have your own medicines, but um, like, how does that feel that some of that healing energy can, can come through the, to the masculine feminine, knowing that that's not the intention, but that inevitably that's what happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I can go from the, the previous experience um, of, 
experiences of us guiding together is that we really balance each other well. Um, whereas, and, you know, I certainly have, th these aren't set in stone qualities that I'm about to say, but the feedback that we got was like, wow, Darren would penetrate us so deeply and kind of like go poking around in these like hard to reach places. And, and then Dana, you came in with like a lot of nourishment and a lot of love and a lot of like, um, you know, uh, graciousness. And that kind of weave that we were able to do, that certainly wasn't like our intention or plan, um, had a huge impact on a lot of people. Whereas like, they, you know, they started to go, uh Oh, you know, Darren's going to come in really strong and like, but then Dana would come in and, and really nourish us. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I remember there was one man, uh, a quest a couple years ago that Dana and I did together. And, and Dana just said some words to him before he went out. And she just said, uh, you know, I'll love you no matter what through and through those words like meant like kept him going while he was out there that he was able mm. to turn towards himself you know at some point in time it was like himself holding a younger part of himself saying hey i'll love you no matter what you know whereas me i'm out there and talking to another guy kind of going man i don't think you've ever been tested <laughs> you know <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah and you know so i'm excited and when it's just me i try to hold both you know but it can be a little bit more um uh the polarity the tension that's created um actually creates a lot of expansiveness yeah, yeah. <laughs> tension that's created uh, and the way our polarity creates a lot of expansion in the space yeah Beautiful. So, yeah. And she's incredibly skilled in, in so many ways. So, yeah, and so while we're, while, <clears throat> while we're here, just speaking directly to the, like, who do you want to take on this quest? Who's the person uh, and what's like the, the, you know, it's not about life situation, but like, who's the person and what's the intention that you would like to see them coming with? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, this is an experience for you as well. And, you know, all yeah. the groups are always amazing. But yeah. for the brother or sister who's listening and asking themselves, is this for me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, one thing that's most important to me is that those that show up are called. And that they, they feel um, a tug um and part of that call may look like this right um before we're able to move from one stage of life to the next we often have to complete any unfinished business from the previous chapter mm. and so if you feel stuck and you're not sure why you've been running is the same wall and don't know why if you are aching with these soul questions about your life um and and it hasn't broke through um if you're ready to step into something new and need to be witnessed by a community to ritually mark to be you know ritually recognized and, and i distinguish ritual and ceremony um, as two different things. And, and ritual is about radical transformation. And ceremony is about confirmation. Mm. So there's wedding ceremonies. We're, we're, it's a confirmation of a, of a love that exists. You know, whereas ritual is like going into radically change. And so this is, this is ritual. Sometimes some people show up as like, I just need confirmation of what already I know. I need to be witnessed in a group. I need to stand for it, you know? Um, so a person that feels that, that those qualities of a call, and there's so many different expressions, um, but you know, if you feel it, 
also is that inherent in the mechanics of wild rice is that we encounter a mini death. We encounter a mini death um, so that we can be reborn. And something that is concerning to me that often exists in um, circles or, you know, side cultures or new age culture is this um, such uh, identification with things that don't live or die talking about god or goddesses such an identification with that that we're actually willing unwilling to experience that many death and so one thing that does happen there and and that is that call of like there is a death and there is a rebirth and so a willingness to lay down our previous identities that we think are us that are really just you know um uh, beautiful shawls or cloaks or shields that we wear to help us get through to the next stage of life. If you're willing to lay that down for a new one um, that is given to us by the earth and creator, then, then this is definitely the place to explore that. Um, as much as I push people, most of the work happens between a conversation between the individual out there and the earth. And I think, I think a huge part of it is the earth is always communicating to us, but we've forgotten that language. We've forgotten how to receive communication from the earth. We've forgotten how to communicate with the earth. I mean, direct gnosis, direct understanding, wisdom that can happen, that, that's always happening. Yes. Um, yes. So this is an opportunity to go out there and, and go, whoa, like if, if, if I'm, establish that thread of connection with the earth, then I will never be lost. You know, I'll always know where I stand. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's part of the medicine of wild rights. You know, it's going out there um, to leave it on the land, yeah. leave it on the land to, um, to take up once again, like what I believe was the greatest human responsibility we had was to take care of our home, to take care of the planet, take care of our place, to take care of our people. That's all inherent in this ritual. And I mean, we're at like ground zero um, in, in the sense of like an absence of a genuine culture which knows how to be in connection with the earth. And so this is the ritual to reclaim that, reclaim, reclaim that connection. And then look around and see your brothers and sisters and, and go, we all did it together. And the thing is, is competition, not that it exists in sacred sons, but it certainly doesn't exist in, in wild rites because everybody's looking at each other and going, whoa, you're going out there to face that too. Yeah. To face whatever it is in yourself to face the earth, to face the night. Um, I'll just say one thing, one more thing real quick is there was a uh, man that I, that I took on quest um, that had given his whole adult life uh, and, and been quite successful um, towards sustainability and investing in um, companies that were devoted to regenerative practices. And he himself had never given himself to the earth. And he was like, I need to go out there and give myself to the earth in complete surrender. I don't know if our culture really values surrender all that much. You know, it's like it's synonymous with defeat sometimes, but not in ritual space. You know, it's like you deeply surrender. Yeah, yeah our, our culture uh, tends to favor comfort at this stage. Yeah. Comfort, complacency, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's, you know, it, and it speaks to the importance. I, I love that about this, this brother who was giving himself in all the ways, dedicating himself to nature, except for the only way that really matters, yeah. which is that surrender and giving yourself. Yeah. Because uh, 
as my brother Zondo so eloquently sings. What is it? How does the line go? Oh, yeah. In the end, in the end, in the end, our eyes will close. You know, it's the only truth really in this world that we can all agree on. In the end, our eyes will close. Yeah. And we go back into the mother. And um, that's, you know, that's a, it's a beautiful experience that you're providing. And do you see, do you see that it's possible to bring this, <clears throat> bring this back as a part of our greater culture? Like, yeah, I know. And I know if, if you want to hear more from Darren, go back and listen to the previous podcast with him. We talked a little bit about mm. the fact that we're living in an industrial society. Mm. Right. And not, not an earth-based culture. Yeah. So do you see this as like a small step towards that or is it, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you view this? Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a lot of people that are working working towards um oh a regenerative culture um there are so many people doing that on in so many different ways um and i think it is a huge part it's it's a huge part um yeah i think i think no matter where one is on their journey, if they are on a spiritual path, then a quest is something that, that can happen not just once, but multiple times yeah. throughout a lifetime. Um, you know, uh, a brother of mine once said, like, if you take one step in the spirit, you got to take two steps in the physical. Mm. So it's like, you know, like going out in the quest is one piece of it. And then yet coming back is just as important. And it's, re it's requiring of us some pretty r radical um, skills to do that. It's, it's not just um, going out on a quest. It's not just being a regenerative farmer. Um, in building the soils, we, we, we have to actually have a whole wheelhouse of skills, emotional intelligence, leadership, relational practices, actually influence and make an impact that we want to change. So quest is absolutely part of that. And, and built in there are aspects of the wheelhouse, you know. Um, but that's why it's like, you know, sacred sons and it's like we're developing leadership, emotional intelligence, right relationship with spirit, right relationship with each other. Because if you're out in the world and, and you're, um, uh, you know, working in investment, you know, um, venture capitalism or, you know, conscious investment or green investments, like you need these other skills. You need these other skills. Um, and one thing that quest does is it really roots us again in where we belong. It roots us again in, in, um, in the principles of regeneration. Um, you know, in, in permaculture, it's like the first year you just observe, just observe. Then you take action. Mm. You know, you listen for a year. Wow. And so, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and I'll just say one more thing to, to, to not have public recognition of passing from one stage of life to another, to, to have those thresholds that we encounter discomfort, you know, can sometimes keep us very, very young can keep us adolescent, you know, can, can keep, keep us, us immature, immature. Yeah. yeah. Can keep us thinking that the purpose of life is to be comfortable, which it's not. If you look at any initiation across any culture, discomfort was a primary ingredient, you know? Um, 
you know, as Tyson Young Caporta says, like what he learned, you know, when he stepped into his initiation, his elders said, hey, you just need to know you're not as important as you think you are, you know, and not quite as important as what you're being invited to participate in. And so something that Quest does is it brings a little bit more balance to how important we think we are and how we're being invited to participate, you know, in the world. Yeah, there's a there's a piece here where that capital V vision can really fill up the cup of purpose and of uh, significance in this life and take and remove some of the need or expectation for the external validation. Yeah. You know, and that's an important transition where I need to be seen as this thing or in this thing versus, oh, no, it's all inside. It's all inside. And, and I've been informed and connected um, to that through nature. And I, there's one thing I really love about all of the work that you bring through, whether it's through divination or lodge or questing, um, which is you, you don't tend to use uh, plant medicines. And there's a, there are there are other leaders and people uh, a lot of people doing that, and I know the Lakota were were more, um, a bit more conservative, you know, and Lakota people also didn't use uh, medicines other than, you know, elements, and you know what's your what's kind of your take and, um, what's what's your piece around why you utilize nature in this way versus some of those other um, types of initiations. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, you know, on Quest, there is, there is plant medicine. It's just a slow drip, baby. (laughs) 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 And and we're, we're not just getting one. Oh, here we go. You know, we're getting, we're getting, you know, I'll speak to the environment I'm in. We're getting the willows. We're getting the cottonwoods. We're getting the ponderosa. Mm. You know, we're getting the buffalo grass, and we're getting the the song of the river. You know, and it's it's a so it does come, it does come. Um, it's just a little bit slower. Another piece is, you know, in plant medicines, it's like you come away from a ritual and you're like, "Yep, I." Um, definitely got blasted out into the cosmos. I definitely, you know, had some stuff that I encountered in myself. Um, it's, it's, it's a very clear departure, um, from everyday perceived reality, right? Maybe it's entering into what's really going on. I don't know. However, with Wild Rights and with Quest, is it so slow that at the end, it's, it's, it always happens. Everyone's like, man, I'm ready to get some food and I'm ready for this and I'm ready to see my beloved and I'm, I'm ready for, you know, whatever it may be. And, and I've heard vegans crave hamburgers out there. I mean, it's just like everybody has it. And then all of a sudden we come back and we hit pavement and we hit town. And I, and I like to do that together. We come back, we come back together. Um, it's like, whoa, I was really, really connected. And I went really deep and really, really far. So we don't quite realize how deep and how far we go, how truly connected and free and expansive. We are until all of a sudden we come back and we're like, oh my gosh, like I went way far out there. And to me, there's a little bit more, it's easier to integrate. It's easier to integrate because of that. And um, I can, you know, uh, I don't need medicine. Certainly it can, it can create massive openings, but when my vision is rooted in that slow, you know, um, enduring uh, presence of the earth, then I can access that all the time. That same yes. reality. Yeah. Yeah. And the and same medicines reality. are powerful. Yeah. 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 As, a, as an earthling, as, as, a, as a being who's connected to the consciousness of Gaia, 
yeah. without without the you know listen i love to travel the cosmos too but yeah. I, but i'm a human being on earth from earth of earth and i love to be here yeah it's, and it's so interesting that our 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 popular culture is like now like super fascinated by getting off of this planet and going to other planets like yeah. what is that <laughs> I mean, I, but maybe both are maybe both are true in the end. Yeah, yeah. I'm most interested in being being here. <laughs> yeah. Myself, you know, you, you got a little bit, little bit more human and Neanderthal yeah. DNA than the uh, than the alien DNA. Yeah, I do. Because <laughs> Elon, he's got he's gone full alien DNA on us. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> I know. Oh gosh. That's one of the other things I love about your containers too. Like just as I, I can see that group of approaching the pavement for the first time together, is that you keep those the containers together. You really support them before and after the experience. I've noticed that in, in watching how oh, you yeah. facilitate. And I think that's really important. You know, really yeah. important for that to come from that expanded place back down and, and grounding in and, and staying connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, someone, you know, it's not infrequent that someone that went on Quest with me seven years ago calls up and says, hey, need, I need to talk for a little bit. Or, you know, talk to a brother yesterday that was on a Quest a year and a half ago. It's like, you need some support. And, mm-hmm. you know, for me, it's like, you know, I'll, I'll be with you f- for the long haul. Um, and do do a lot of support going in and a lot of support coming out. I mean, in a lot of ways, if I look to the physical skills when it comes to making fire by friction, right? Whether it's a hand drill or whether it's a bow drill, um, 75 to 80% of your en- of one's energy goes into preparation. Um, and then that way, when it comes time, to spin that hand drill or that bow drill, um, you know, it happens quite quickly in, in a matter, in a minute. Right. But if we, if we carve that spindle perfectly, that baseboard perfectly, if we get the right top notch, top socket. um, Whereas in our culture, it's like most people spend about uh, 25% on preparation. And then 75% of their time stuff in newspaper and, you know, trying to get the fire lit. And so it's the same, you know, with, with quest in a way, Mm. it's like the, the amount of preparation that we put into it. Um, Then when we're out there, it, it, it's a very different experience. Yeah. 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 I love that. Once again, wild rights will be happening in Ecuador January 14th through 22nd, 2022. If you'd like more info on wild rights, go to sacredsons.com and click on wild rights. Uh, if you'd like to get on a call with Darren, you can book a call through that page as well. Yeah. Uh, Darren, it's always amazing to reconnect with you, to catch up. Um, it was great to see your smile and your play and how you were messing with J-Mac the whole time at Convergence. <laughs> I'd like to witness that side of you as well. <laughs> yeah is there yeah, gotta have fun man gotta keep it lighthearted. gotta yeah. keep it light i love it because Kali said it so well he's like it doesn't have to be about suffering all the time yeah. <laughs> even though sometimes we, we we feel it does um is there anything that you would like to leave with the brothers and sisters who are listening mm. yeah uh Yeah, just a lot of gratitude. Uh, um, Gratitude for the Sacred Sons container. um, For you, Adam. Um, And yeah, I feel I feel blessed. Um, And as Kale would say, burdened with the responsibility. Yeah, and and mostly blessed to do this work. And I'm, I'm I'm so grateful and I'm grateful to all the elders and mentors um, and peers and friends and allies um, and the ones that are, you know, 
don't like what I do. I uh, love them too. I'm grateful. Yeah. Um, and, and willing, always willing to engage in conversation. Um, and so just a whole lot of gratitude. Yeah. yeah. And I just say, I'll, I'll finish with one of my teacher's quotes. It's like, the vision is the journey and the journey is now. And so, you know, may, may all of you listening, um, I'll ask you a question, you know, um, are you following a vision? Are you following something um, that is a purpose beyond yourself that, um, that is for the generations to come and brings you such joy, and levity, and strength um, to go out into the world? If you had 24 hours to live, would you be doing what you're doing right now? And if you're not, then it's time to go out and seek a vision. The vision is the journey and the journey is now. With that, Darren Silver, Wild Ride, Sacred Sons, Adam Jackson. We're out, family. Peace. Peace.